Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of thoroughfare proofs, or what the book calls detour proofs. Up until this point, uh, we've learned how to prove one pair of triangles congruent. And we've extended upon that using altitudes and medians. Um, we've worked with circles and the radii of circles to help us out. Um, and we've even gone beyond proving the triangles congruent using corresponding parts of congruent triangles, are congruent or CPCTC. And then we've, of course, used our four postulates for, for proving triangles congruent, the side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and hypotenuse leg. As I mentioned, we're going to now take this a step further and introduce a concept called detour proofs, or what I call thoroughfare proofs. And instead of proving just one set or one pair of triangles congruent, we're going to have to prove a second set of triangles congruent or a second pair of triangles congruent. So these proofs are going to be a little bit longer, they're going to be a little bit more involved, and we'll use you know, our first pair of triangles and CPCTC to help us then prove the second pair of triangles and then achieve our goal. So the procedure with thoroughfare proofs, as you can see here on the screen, first thing you want to do is determine uh, which triangles you must prove congruent to reach whatever that desired conclusion is. And then you'll attempt to prove those triangles congruent. Oftentimes, that first pair that you see, you won't have enough information to do that. So you'll have to find a different pair of triangles, and you'll be able to, hopefully, be able to get the, that second pair congruent. And then you'll use CPCTC, or corresponding parts, to lead you into getting the second pair of triangles congruent. So, as it says here in the notes, if you can't prove your original pair of triangles congruent, find the parts of a second pair of triangles that will help you prove the original pair of congruence. Or find a pair of triangles you can easily prove congruent. And attempt to prove that pair of triangles that you identified congruent. Then use CPCTC to help prove the second pair of triangles congruent. Thus, we'll end up going through one pair of congruent triangles to help us prove the second pair congruent. So proofs will be a little bit longer now, a little bit more involved. Um, I know that you guys will be up to the task. Also in this section, we study the midpoint formula. And the midpoint formula will help us find the middle point between two other points, or the average of our x-coordinates and the average of our y-coordinates. So this information here is just another ordered pair, the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So if we have any ordered pairs, we have a pair of ordered pairs, x1 and y1, and x2 and y2, we can use the midpoint formula to determine the midpoint. And that simply take your two x coordinates, add them up, and divide by two. <coughs> Excuse me, take the average. And same with the y coordinates. Take your two y coordinates, add them up, and divide by two, that's the average of the y's, and then you will get to your midpoint. So here's an example of how the midpoint formula works and why it works. So we have here, so we have here points A and B, and point A is at x1, y1, and point B is at x2, y2. And if we want to find point M, our midpoint, okay, well our midpoint is simply going to be halfway over and halfway up. So halfway over, x1, plus x2 divided by 2. x1 plus x2. Take those x coordinates, find the average. And same with the y coordinates. That's how high we're going to go. We're not going to go all the way up. We're going to go halfway up. So the average height, y1 plus y2 all over 2, that is going to be the location 
on the coordinate plane for m. So you'll have to commit that midpoint formula to memory and apply that when we need to. So here's a sample um, when we would use the midpoint formula. In triangle ABC, find the coordinates of the point at which the median from A intersects BC. So we're going to take our median from A and see where that intersects BC. Well, we know it's going to be halfway over and halfway up. So our midpoint, call it X, is going to be located at 2 plus 6 over 2. That's the average of the x coordinates, 2 plus 6 over 2. And the average of the y's, 4 plus 10 over 2. And that location is 8 over 2, or 4, 7. So our median will go to 0.47. And that will be the middle point, or the midpoint of BC. I have another sample problem here. It looks like this is going to be a sample of a detour proof. So it might take a minute to write this out. Our given PQ bisects and segment YZ. And Q is the midpoint of WX. Angle Y is congruent to angle Z. And WZ is congruent to XY. And we want to prove angle WQP so this angle here with the question mark is congruent to this angle here. So it looks like it would be easiest to prove our bottom left and bottom right triangles congruent. Well, let's see if that's reasonable. If PQ bisects YZ, then don't we know that ZP is congruent to PY? And Q is the midpoint of WX, so those two are congruent. And angle Y is congruent to angle Z. And WZ is congruent to XY. So we would love to get these two triangles congruent, but that's not going to work for us. But based on our tick marks, it looks like we've got the top two triangles congruent by side angle side. So let's go ahead and prove those congruent and then use CPCTC to help us get the other two triangles down here congruent. So step two, since PQ bisects YZ, we know that ZP, segment ZP, is going to be congruent to segment YP. And that is a bisector divides a segment, or splits a segment, into two congruent segments. And then we have our givens. Angle Z is congruent to angle Y, and segment WZ is congruent to segment XY. So now we have one pair of triangles congruent. Watch my correspondence here. Look out for that. It looks like we'll go Z, W, P is congruent to triangle YXP. So I have the correct correspondence, and that is going to be side angle side, steps two, three, and four. Well, how are those going to help us get the other two triangles congruent? Well, fortunately, we can have WP congruent to PX. I'm going to run out of tick marks. So in step six, then I know WP is congruent to XP by CPCTC. And well, Q is the midpoint. So I have to put my other given in here. Q 
Q is a midpoint of WX. That's given. And then I also know that WQ is congruent to XQ. From our definition of a midpoint, a midpoint splits a segment into two congruent segments. And step nine says PQ is reflexive. I'm going to say that because that would give me side, side, side. So, so I've got PQ is reflexive. So now my triangle on the lower left is congruent to my triangle on the lower right by side, side, side. Step 10. See, I told you these proofs would be a little longer. So triangle... PWQ, the lower left-hand side, is congruent to triangle PXQ. It's a triangle by side, side, side. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And those steps are 9, 8, and 6. So 6, 8, 9. And now I know that angle W. QP is congruent to XQP by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we went through one pair of triangles and we use CPC to help us get the second pair of triangles congruent. Just like we had talked about. So we detoured through the first pair of triangles to get the second pair congruent, and then we use CPCTC. So we'll work on that a little bit more when I see you in class.